the last few years, collective research has debunked the popular myths that a high fiber diet lifestyle can cause unfinished housework, late dinners, and neglected family members. In fact, continuing studies show that a high fiber diet lifestyle may significantly improve the disposition of a crafter, creating a more contented home life. Furthermore, continued exposure can develop an ability to endure meetings, waiting rooms, school functions, and sporting events without experiencing the kind of boredom that makes one want to consume lead paint. Here are just a few ways one can properly increase daily fiber intake. Visit your local yarn store or shop online. Join online fiber communities. Tour sheep or alpaca farms. Attend fiber festivals. Or listen to the High Fiber Diet podcast. Please remember to spread your fiber intake throughout the day rather than trying to get it all in one shot. Stretching and resting is important and your body will thank you. Hi. This is Kagi, and welcome to the High Fiber Diet. Oh, it's been a minute, but I'm going to get back into this video thing. Um, I thought about going audio. I tried it with two. I can't get it on iTunes. I can't get it. You know, it's just not, for the amount of money you have to pay, it's not worth it. So I'm going to stick with video at this point in time. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm not going to show you everything that I finished in the last little bit, but I think I have my phone around here somewhere. I'm looking. Yep, here it is. And I did make show notes, so I'm going to try on that part to keep organized. I'm still not editing because, no. This all was written for before Christmas and, or after Christmas before New Year's, so things have changed and I have piles of stuff around me. And um, yeah, so let's see, where am I going to start? I have somewhere. Let's just start with whatever I grab first, right? <laughs> I hope your 2023 is starting off perfectly. And if not, that it only gets better. So I finished up a Ski Lodge beanie. And this is by Expression Fiber Arts. And I'll get my glasses down. I haven't woven in the ends yet because I'm not sure if I like it. I think it's a little bit big and a little bit, yeah. So, thinking about ripping it back, that my theme for this year, I'll tell you. Found a lot of things that I'm just not happy with, so ripping back is going to happen. So, but it was a good pattern. I haven't blocked it or anything, but as you can see, it ripples some at the top, and I'm not happy with that, and I'm just not happy with the size of it. So, this was done out of Lion Brand. Um, it was one of their special yarns. This was the, the mauve um, pink colors. So, yeah. It was good yarn to work with, but I have a couple other projects that I've done in this. 100% um, acrylic. I may just keep it and give it away as charity. I don't know. I don't like to give things that I wouldn't wear myself out, so probably not. Um, talking about that kind of yarn, I also got blue and white, and I decided to try out the, well, this is the pink and white, but I decided to try out the uh, Apache Tears pattern, and it worked out really well, but it is super tedious, and so I made three mug rugs and decided this isn't for me. So this is all I'm doing on the Apache Cheers. And what it is, is it's a um, mosaic, so you go one way only. And you trim and you keep ends. And on the pink one, I was trying to decide if I liked being able to cut the ends and bury them. And I just didn't. It's, it's bulkier. And you saw how some popped out. And it just not what I'm looking for. I love the pattern as in the look of it, but the doing of, I'm not going to be doing an afghan. The back of it is just flat, makes for a nice blanket. It's tight. Um, 
like I said, it's just not for me. And I did this on a larger size hook, so it's got stretch. And then I did this on a smaller hook just to see if I would like that fabric better. I did like the fabric better of the smaller, but still just too tedious for me. I also finished a square flower, which I'll put up somewhere around in here, a picture. And that's um, just a granny that I turned into like a sunflower. I was originally going to do Boo, a, a sunflower pillow. And when I got to going on it, it was going to be over two feet, over 24 inches. And yeah, that was too big to even mail or anything like that. So I ripped that out and I ended up making a blanket that is huge. And so, like I said, I'll put a picture in. Um, I've already gifted that. So i um, giving that to a friend. Other thing I finished in the last couple months, um, which I talked about on the audio, but anyways, um, this was the... I'm going to have to put the name down here because I can't remember. But it's a Mobius um, out of Haiku yarn. And it's gorgeous. And I still have that much of the ball left. It was just so big and so cumbersome and so not me. I just don't see myself wearing it. It's so big and bulky. I would rather rip this out and make something that I actually will wear and will like out of it. It is so soft. It is a four ply unplied. Um, each ply has two plies that are plied and then the four plies should have been cable plied but they kept together with just a straight four ply. And so this is going to get ripped out and I will make something out of it that I will be much happier with. And I'm going to stop here because I'm actually going to pull it off on my ball winder. But this, you know, for the amount of money that you spend, you want something that you want to wear. And this is one of those things that I absolutely want something that I want to wear. And I love the colors. It'll go wonderfully with my white wool coat. It just, yeah. So, yeah, another finished object that's getting ripped out. That's right now pretty much part of the course. But I have one that is not getting ripped out. Well, the blanket's not because it was handed off. But in my little basket here, I have some... This is Stitch Please by Premier, and it's 100% wool, and it is kind of like Premier's answer to Cascade 220. It's a little bit rustic, but when it washes up, it's super soft. And so a friend of mine at work had said that she just kept commenting on all my sweaters and all my stuff that I wear, and can I buy one from you? And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't sell. As most of you know, my wording is... Um, Knitting's like sex. If I love you, it's free. If I don't, you can't pay me enough. I hook, but not that kind of hooking. So I still have to block this. This is a Premier Yarn pattern that's just the pocket scarf. And it's supposed to have 10 inch pockets, but I got bored. So these are eight inch pockets. It is crocheted. They, it is a um, shell stitch and pockets on both ends. It does fit. I just had my phone. Where'd it go? This is going to be play that game. Have a drink every time I lose my phone. So it does fit the full um, big iPhone into it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to line the pockets. I might um, just because that's simple. And it does reach down, have a nice crossover and you still have room to put your hands in your pockets so it's nice and long and I like that but when I was done with that I had some yarn left over and I figured well what's the point in giving her a scarf which this isn't for Christmas this is just because and so I started a hat because I had this much yarn left over and no pattern. I just cast on a normal amount. I think it's 108 stitches. Um, 
and I did a mock rib at the bottom and then I'm just gonna go up, you know, eight inches or so or wherever and then decrease and it'll be a beanie type hat. I don't know if I'll put a pom-pom on it or not, but it's showing the difference between how this yarn knits up and how this yarn crochets up. And I think they're both nice and tactile, nice and soft. So um, that is going. I have these going on my Lika um, size nine needles. This is a 12 inch. That's what I like to make hats on. Not that I make a ton of hats, but there you go. And at this point in time, it's in this basket. And when I get some time in the evenings, I sit down and I knit on this. It's not one that goes with me anywhere, but it is going. Um, I'm gonna move over here. My Christmas Eve cast on got ripped out. Those were a pair of socks. Um, I decided I was going to make a pair of mittens instead, so I ripped them back and I haven't even begun the, the mittens. I had knit a pair of mittens, which I'll put a picture of here. Um, they were the uh, tin can knits, simple mitts, and um, I had done them out of Chicken Lady Fiber Arts Oh, it was one of her um, surprise or presents balls. It's a ball that had like stitch markers and things like that inside. And it was in this beautiful yellows and fall colors and just gorgeous. Yeah. As soon as I got them done, I set them down. They got into the laundry basket. They got felted. Yep. So I have to make another pair of mitts. And... Let's see, where am I going next? Um, I think I'm done with all of my finished, other than I was working on, um, did I bring it in here? Yes, I did. Um, I was working on granny squares for this advent, and I haven't opened them all because I've gotten only these granny squares and they're in the other room. But there's a card that came with this advent that is in order of day one through, and it starts with Rudolph, and this was all about um, the, mis the Isle of Misfit toys. And um, I'm going to put them together, but when I got them done, I didn't like the size. And so I ordered a skein a bear from Wool to Die For. And this is a cone, not a skein, mini skeins. Um, this is a beautiful cone of 7525. And it's the same yarn that that was made out of. So I'm going to be um, putting an edging on each one of those squares. And that's why I stopped as I was waiting for this to come in. And then I got started on something else. And those squares will get done. And I will probably do one plain one to make it 25, so it's five by five. And that will be a lap blanket um, coming up, but that is getting tucked away for a little bit until I'm ready to work on it again. And talking about Advents, I had gotten the Advent from Sweet Mountain Yarns. And she now owns a uh, local yarn store in Cody, Wyoming. And she had sent through, it's all open here. So, you know, it's past Advent and all that. Just finished the epiphany. I'm gonna get a sip of tea. I'm drinking Irish breakfast today. And she had put it together in these burlap bags and that was just gorgeous. She had put spices. They still smell like the spices. It's wonderful. Anise and cinnamon and just the whole spices. And it came through with both a, let's see if I can do this correctly, both a crochet pattern that can be done up or a knit pattern that can be done up. And I believe I'm going to do the crochet when I sit down to this. But these are all 
um, Rambouillet, which is um, French Merino. And the cinnamon was the very first color. And then I don't remember which one, but I think Orange Spice was the second. And then there is a Blackberry. A Mulled Wine, which she actually gave us Mulling Spice to go with. And... The last one is almond. And these are all done in sport weight. And we got wool wash to go with, and we got a little mini weaving. We'll pull that out. And so I need to get this going. I just haven't yet. It's still in its box. Been working on other things, which I will show you. But this little weaving thing is it's a woven ornament that will go on the tree next year. And I need to make that up. And everything in the box um, is there for it. And if you haven't checked out her shop, you should. It's Sweet Mountain Crafts. And she also has a podcast. So um, you should check that out also. But... Let's see, what else do I have that I am working on? Ah, I have my Patriots blanket. It is the Patriot Collection from Chicken Lady Fiber Arts. And I am down to this color, so I'm almost done. And I have this much of the cone that is a cotton. And um, yeah, I think it's 100% cotton. Yep, 100% cotton from the yarn markets in UK. And it's kind of slubby, but I'm loving the way the two blends. It started with the blue. And this is probably the fourth rendition of a pattern that I've started with this yarn, so it's really held up. But it started with the blue. Of course, that's the big square in the middle. And now, as you can see, it's getting out to the pinks on the outside, and then it'll go to that full and it'll be baby blanket size and nice and washable, um, lay flat to dry kind of thing. And I am working with a size uh, 3.5 hook. And this stays by my couch in a ottoman that has the lid that comes up and down. Um, all of my blankets stay there so that when I want to stay warm and work on something, I can do both at the same time. And it's easy to pull out. Like I said, it's almost done, but it takes forever to get around right now. Um, I also started, I don't even remember the name of this pattern. I think it'll go right down here. But the pattern is convoluted. You have to have one pattern for the front, one pattern for the sleeve, one pattern for the arms, one pattern for, but this is getting ripped out. This is done in Drops Air, and it's absolutely gorgeous, this really pale pink, and I know it will work on me. And this sweater is gorgeous. It is, um, I'm doing it on a size 17, which as you can see, I do a 17 on one side, I do a 10 on the other, and that way as it slides off, I can do. But beautiful lace work. But it's to the point where when you go through with it, I just can't wrap my brain around, okay, I gotta go to pattern A and pattern B, and. I can normally do that, just right now I'm not in that spot. So a lot of frogging. Um, I was gonna do a finish it and frog it, which I've got a ton of whips that I will be doing. Um, I think I'm gonna go back to a monthly podcast. So that is easier. Um, Gandalf, you do not need in the Ormois. Gandalf, you do not need in the Ormois. So um, this, would have been beautiful. And I know I will find another pattern for this yarn that is just as nice. It's a very, um, very soft yarn. And right now I'm holding it double. 
So I have a lot of options because I have a lot of yarn. But this would have been beautiful. But I just can't finish it. I just can't. I could have stopped there and just gone with plain. That isn't what I want out of this. So it is pretty. And if you're knitting the pattern, more power to you. I just, not for me. <clears throat> so that, <clears throat> excuse me. So that one's getting ripped out. Okay, next. Oh, these are the socks that were going to be mittens. These are from Sweet Tea Yarns. And it is the color A Walk to Remember. And I think they'll turn out really pretty as a um, pair of mittens. So I've already broken them into 50 gram. And that's where I wound it back off. And I'm using size four needles, double points on that. I just wanted mittens instead of socks. Holding it in just a little bag. I don't have any major bags. I mean, I have one, two, maybe. I don't know. This one is in a gnome for the holidays. Sarge got me 100% um, Kiviet from Wendy. Muskox. Let's see. What was it? Um, can't even think about it. I'll put it down here. See? Brain gone. And I decided to just start a um, a shawl. It's a crescent shaped shawl. I got these day and night needles. I love the tip. The problem is they etched right here and it grabs yarn. And so I think the reason I set these down is I'm having to pull it over this and I don't want to snag the kiviet. So this will be moving on to other needles and it is just a plain um, stockinette and then garter and I'm just going to do ridges. You don't need to play and do a ton of stuff. This is going to speak for itself. It's so soft. I thought about doing one of those uh, cowls that come up. I think they're called smoke rings. <clears throat> I have two skeins of this and here we go. Here's the name of it. Kiviet by I keep it in a Ziploc because I don't want it flopping around and undoing the little ball. Um, Windy Valley Muskox. Let's see, can I show you the... There we go. And this is in the... Yeah, color 3003, yay. No, it's... Um, it's a navy, a deep navy. <clears throat> kind of got a little bit of a sea ocean, you know, right before the horizon, which is my favorite blue. So, yeah, this, I've got to change the, the needles on it in order to move forward with it. And part of that... Um, Part of my Charming You Advent, which I don't have out here. Oh, yeah, I do. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's right here, and I'm working on it. Um, I got this bag in the Advent, and the bag is made by Button and Boo. It's got the little clasp. And I decided to skein up in order of... Um, I didn't do it in order of 1 through 24. I decided to do it where the colors melded together, kind of a fade, but more of a blend. And I have those 12, I have this 12, and then the center would end, 
going into the mostly full skein and then I'll do something more formal in this and it came with a little pouch and let's see I think it came yep some little stitch markers which are smaller than what I need on the project that I'm using because I decided to do a Pharisee, is that how you say it? Pharos, Pharisee, I don't know, um, style shawl. And I'm using Rudolph, can you see him? Rudolph. And I also have Bumble, who's the abominable snowman. And there are others, where did I put those? Maybe they're in here. Um, yeah. So the ones that bumbles on a different project. Where is he? Hmm. Anyways, I don't know what else I'm working on. Rudolph and Friends by Southern Skein Yarns. That's who that was for. And we have the Storyteller. We have Hermie, isn't that his name? And we have Santa, I think. I think those are the ones. And then I got Bumble and um, Rudolph. So they're cute. These were all made by, hmm, not sure, maybe it was her. And of course it came in the organza bag. But I am using it to keep track on this shawl. So this was where I began. And then I've moved up. And up. And up. And I'm down to here. So how am I doing this shawl? Um, well, I'm working on... It also came with a piece of Christmas cake. So Christmas cake. But uh, let's see, what size needle am I using? A size nine. And these are again, the day and night. And again, I mean, I, I love these needles, but I wish they would not have etched right here, the numbers, because it is a deep etching and it snags the yarn. I'm wondering, what if I put clear nail polish on it to fill in? Kind of sand it first and then put, I don't know. I may just, I have the whole set, so I don't know. I don't know. But, um, anyways, how am I doing this? Um, on the main side, the one with Rudolph, uh, I increase, uh, I do four stitches and then I increase front and back. And then I knit to the center stitch and one before the center stitch. That's where these stitch markers, the little light bulb ones are. Um, I increase, knit the middle, and then increase, and then go to the other end and increase. And all of my increases on this are simple. I wanted it simple, so just knit front and back. And that is giving me this line in the middle that's a spine. And on the opposite side, which I have to tie in all of my ends from how I put them together. I left enough to be able to put those in. But I am only increasing on the outside edge. And so it is six stitches increased per every two rows. And so it is growing more wide than it is deep. But I already have... I want to say it's 147 stitches on each side and I'm only nine yeah I've got three more colors on this I've just started this magenta color going into purples no I've got four more colors so I must be eight in because there's the magenta there's a light lavender there's a grapey purple and then there's a bluey and the bluey will match into this one on the outside. 
and go forward and there's 12 in this one and so yeah um, and then like I said I finish up in that blue and I don't know if I'm going to do some sort of lace or if I'm going to do a cable or if I'm just going to do a different pattern than garter but I'm going to do something different with this and it's going to be large and it will probably be a short border but you know you never know so that is being kept um, again I don't travel with this um, I normally travel with socks which I have back here going and the socks I have going right now are um, ones that I made up on the sock machine. I have a 1924 auto knitter, which I have now ordered and received my 60, my 60 stitch. Um, I don't know what it's called, the circle thing. And this one was done on an 80 with um, mock rib so that it pulls it together. And you can see the mock rib there, it stretches nicely. And on this side, and these are my watermelon socks, and I'm working on the tops of these. Um, size 1.5 US, 2.5, Haya Haya. I'm a double point person, I like my double points. And so that will get done eventually. I've already done the first one. It's in the other room. And this is being held in my three by the sea. Little, I think it was supposed to be a notion pouch, but it's perfect for carry along socks in my purse. It just zips right up. I know some people don't like zippers for their stuff. Um, I like drawstrings and zippers. It depends if it's going in my purse. I'd like a zipper. A zipper to work on it, you just pull it open. If you're having a problem, just turn it down. It's not that hard to grab the edges and turn it down if you really need to. I don't, so I don't. And um, it's got a cute little polka dot on the inside and the red, white, and blue on the outside, which, yeah. I think I have fur from everything all over me. Yay. Um, what else? Oh, I do have a New Year's cast on. And my New Year's cast on, I only got to the point of swatching. And it has been drying all week and just sitting there so that it can. But it will be the sheer uh or out of sheer that's the merino dorset um blend of yarn raised in ohio in the buttermilk colorway this is from harrisonville designs and the pattern i am doing is right there on the front and it is called the barnes sweater and so that's the barn sweater it's a big shawl collar big leather buttons and I've ordered the buttons and I just I like the plane I like the cable work it's going to be a work of love I'm not looking to hurry through this um, I swatched twice um, the first time I swatched on what they called for and I know I'm a tight knitter so I know I need to go up but you always check it and so it was done in double seed or double moss however you want to put it and I had to go up to a size, are these 10s or 11s? It's harder to see, but they're not etched. They're just there. And these are a 10, US 10. And so I have them in this uh, needle holder. Once it gets on and has a project on it, these are really good for needle holding. But my swatch came out dead on on a size 10, and I did a nice size swatch. Um, so when I measured out the four inches, it's within the insides. 
and so it's not getting any of the extra pull that you give on the top, the bottom, or the sides. So you always want extra for your swatching. Those little swatches, not for a sweater. Um, not for a sweater, not for me. So I have this, and it softened up so much. This is very much a farm yarn. And what I mean by that is it's not overly processed and there is a lot of um, hay in it. I won't say VM because it is clean and it smells very lanolin-y. Um, so it's not over processed, but it does have those little flecks that I, I won't knit with Noro because of them. Because to me, that's a completely processed yarn and it has hay in it. But this being a farm yarn, I am willing to pick out those little bits. And um, yeah, I'm very happy about this. And this is being held in my, oh, Elizabeth from Pearled in Texas is the one that made this gnome bag. And as everybody knows, I love gnomes. And... Um, it's a perfect fit for this size. Um, it has a pocket on the inside. It's a nice muslin, and then it has the detail, and it came with a gnome stitch marker, and then it's a little bit heavy to be used, but it's great on the side of a bag. Um, and that's just my opinion. Other people may. I like light stitch markers. So I have nine of these to make up the size, I think I'm doing size three. Um, and it's an oversized sweater, so I'm actually taking it down some because it's supposed to be 10 inches, and that's too much positive ease on me. And so now that I have it swatched and everything has come out well, I will be getting this cast on probably next weekend. Um, I don't have a lot of knitting time during the week, uh, 15, 20 minutes at night at max, and that's if my brain can do it. I don't know. I get home from work, you know, the normal household stuff, and then you go to sit down, and it's like, I'm done. That's all there is. There isn't any more, and I can't go forward. So I just kind of sit there and veg and play on the phone. I try to pick up the needles every day because that is my happy spot, but I don't force myself because there are days that my tension will be completely wonky. And like this week, I'm doing the, um, I think it's 15 minutes of focus or something like that. If you watch the Anna Netter uh, podcast, she talked about it. And it's uh, 15 minutes dedicated to something and for me, listening to books and stuff, I do that in the car on the drive because I have an hour drive, but each way. And But when I get home, 15 minutes to distress, I did notice picking up my um, Advent shawl and I want to keep the same tension, it made me relax. And so forcing myself to do that on the night that I did was good, but most of the time, I'm not going to force myself to knit because I know my tension is going to be wrong. And if I'm working on a sweater, that one part's going to pull funny. Or like in that shawl, I was able to just... So, yeah. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I think I'm done with that side. So a couple things that I got for Christmas. First up. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. A little bit, maybe. Turn. There we go. Sunflowers. And it's going to get two bees and possibly a bee butt. Because I like bee butts. I think they're cute. And so this is my favorite flower. And it goes along with my knit and pearl here. And um, let's see. Can I get that? There we go. I don't like anything showing on the top. So these are just my secret on the insides. And so that was one of my Christmas presents. Another was a, hmm, where'd that go? I thought I had it. Did it just get pushed? Hmm. Yeah, 
I don't know where that went, but um, I had a uh, vacuum sealer and I have vacuum sealed some yarn. Um, when I'm putting away certain kinds, not that I have a bug problem or anything, but it just makes me feel better. Or when I'm shipping, vacuum seal it. So it's not just for food, it's a vacuum sealer. It might be my gadget of the week, but yeah, I was very happy with that. And then I ordered, I've wanted to learn to embroider for ages, and I just haven't found something that I really like to do. And so I ordered from, do they have their name on it? Video link, how to do it. Uh-oh. And they have no name on the outside, but it was from Etsy. Mm -hmm. Just says Canada order for me. Anyways, I ordered a complete kit in the colorway of coffee. And it says embroider beginner embroidery stitches. And so it goes through and it, it does the sampler. And it tells you how to do each kind of stitch in this little pamphlet. And how many strands to use, three strands, two strands. I've always been one that I didn't understand that. If they give it to you in a 12, why aren't you using it in a 12? But I can see that's the thickness of things. So um, at least I'll learn. And there's a YouTube video and I'll let you know how it goes as I go through. Excuse me. Need more caffeine. I love these hydro flasks. They have become my favorite coffee cup to, other than taking it in the car because they're a little bit wide, but they keep it nice and, and warm. And then like at work, I use my Yetis because they, they have the lids. These have a lid too, but I don't care for the lid. But these have a grippy, so I don't have to use the handle. And then, well, I have some purchases. Let's see. I ordered from Kirby Werby Yarn. And this was my half birthday present, not my Christmas present. And the reason for that is my birthday is June 26th. And half birthday is December 26th. And she made a colorway called A Case of the December 26s. And I had to. And it's uh, self-striping, old faithful, 75, 25, four ply, 440 yards in the case of a case of the December 26s. And what she says on this is December 26th is her sad day. Um, it's kind of like, it's all over. What now? And to me, because I'm completely opposite of most people, is Christmas starts, well, Advent starts on Advent Sunday, but Christmas starts the 12 days of Christmas. And so going through to December 6th, which is the Epiphany, um, Three Kings Day, and gifts there, and um, then, of course, St. Distaff's Day, which I did not spend on St. Distaff's Day this year. Um, I was deep cleaning my bedroom. But I love this, and it will be made up into socks. Very cute. So I got that from Kirby Werby Yarn. And then I ordered from Premier Yarn. I'm not affiliated, but I do like their project. Their It's better than Red Heart, in my opinion. Not that I don't mind Red Heart. I've knit with it. I've crocheted with it. But the anti-pilling. I have a couple sweaters out of this anti-pilling. But this isn't for that. I am going to do another afghan. I have decided I have a ton of... Of sweaters. I think I counted yesterday when I deep cleaned my bedroom and I have 56 sweaters that I have crocheted or knit in my house right now, which 12 of them are going out. Um, three of them, I'm going to put up a picture here. I, I ripped back one yesterday, which was a big woolly one that I am going to do the lotus flower hat out of. And I did make a lotus flower. I'll put that picture here too. I forgot to talk about that. I think that's the one that I sealed. And oh, there it is. Hold on. Let's 
See, I sealed it. And as you can see, it's mostly flat. It has a pom-pom. And what I was doing was I wanna make sure that it's not going to ruin that pom-pom when it gets air back in. And so this is the lotus flower. I've seen a lot of it on Instagram and I love it. Poof it up, look at that, it just came straight out. And so I did this out of Malabrigo. But the yarn that this is uh, Rasta in the, let's think about it. Um, I know this is unicorn bark. This one, it's night something, but it's a purple. And as I'm ruining my hair today, it's a little bit snug on me, but it'll fit the person that it's attended for. And the other thing I did when I put on mine, I take a piece of felt and I make a button out of felt and that's what the button goes on. Instead of using um, an actual hard button, I do a um, felt button in the top to hold on my pom-poms. And then that just needs to be shook out and it'll be nice and pretty on top. So I think out of the yarn from that sweater that I just showed, um, I can do a couple of these in more plain colors and uh, be able to have one for myself and one for maybe a sister-in-law or something. But this will go back in, I'll put it in this way, and I still have enough room to reseal this because you have to have two inches. I can still put this in the machine reseal it, get it flat, and this will go into the packaging that's going to be mailed out to a friend of mine. And that is uh, all the information for the lotus flower I think I put up already. Um, at this point in time, it's just chatter, so grab your tea. What did we do? What has been going on? Well, a couple of months ago, I said I was going to go audio, and like I said, I've had some difficulties, not only with being able to get Sarge in and get him going on the audio, but also with wanting to sit down and actually do it. And I think it's because of the frustration of not being able to get it up on iTunes. They wouldn't accept, now I used to have it up on iTunes um, as an audio, and I was using the same logo. They wouldn't accept it. Um, and that was the only thing holding it back, a flipping picture, and they wouldn't put it up. So I was on Spotify, and I was on um, Libsyn, and going into the first of the year, I just went, you know what, it's $25 a month to do that, and I'm not getting out of it what I want. And YouTube at this point in time is free. So I'm going back to video, and I hope you guys appreciate that. And I know I look weird on where I'm looking on the camera, and it's supposed to be over here or something, and I'm not going to stare. The sun's right there, and yet yeah, that's not happening. So just, yeah. Um, we decided during um, the last couple of months to simplify, minimize. So I have been, you know, just getting rid of things that we don't need, um, way too many clothes, way too many dishes, way too many everything that I moved here from Michigan. <laughs> we just don't need it. We don't have kids anymore. We don't have grandkids anymore, at least not here. So, you know, if we ever need it moving back, we'll get it then. But I'm really liking the simpler life of not having all the crud, but I still feel like a hoarder. And so we're just my... I always pick a word for the year, and my word for the year is going to be minimize, and it's minimize me, getting back to exercise, getting back to my health. Um, now that they figured out what's going on and everything was fixed, um, that is going better, um, and minimize everything else. We don't need 10 different copies of X. We don't need that. The only thing we're not minimizing are things that we absolutely love. For me, um, my spinning wheel, though I haven't touched it really in a year, um, I'm not getting rid of it. 
my my yarn stash, my needles, my but I am deciding what I love and what I don't love. And no, I'm not doing that. I don't know what her name is that only keep what you love, only yeah, if it doesn't spark a joy. Because frankly, toilet brushes do not spark a joy in me and I'm not throwing it out because I do need it. So, <laughs> you know. Um but for the most part, there's a lot here that I can get rid of. Um, I have been working on it. And I mean, right now I have four trash bags, big trash bags full of clothing that are going to be going to Goodwill. I have one trash bag full of shoes that, well, I don't know if it's Goodwill. I think we're actually going to give it to the tribal. Um, I have a friend of mine that goes up to the tribal church. And, uh, that, that would be easier for me, but, um, I went through and I tried on all my sweaters and even though I've knit them, does it mean that I love them? I can always re-knit if I want to out of a different yarn because most of the time I don't use the yarn that's called for, so it doesn't get the same characteristics as what I'm looking for. But that's because I have a huge stash and I like using my stash because I have cultivated my collection and I know what tactile and, and things like that. But um, I order yarn with something intended. I don't just willy-nilly order yarn. Come here, little guy. This is Gandy. Gandy, come here. Yeah. Um, he does not play with yarn, except I have been working on one sweater that is made out of merino and mohair. And um, he's decided he likes the mohair and he has licked it to the point where it is felted. So that sweater will be pulled out. And I really wanted, it was the Whitmore sweater. I really wanted to... Um, make that sweater. I think it's gorgeous. I love the colors I chose, but he doesn't seem to attack Surrey, but this mohair in particular, he's all over it. So, and it was really one of the first times I've knit with mohair in quite a bit because the last two times I tried, one was spinning and one was knitting and I got um, wool in my eye and wound up almost losing an optic nerve because of mohair. But that one might get ripped out because of the cat. But for the most part, I just, I love the yarn that I have. And I love the sweaters that I have made. But do I love them on me? Not always. This is a store-bought sweater. And if it fits, it fits. And it's comfortable. And it's a kick around the house. I do wear it sometimes out to work if I have blocked it nicely. But just to reach here beside me. I have this one that was designed by Knititude, and I love it, but it's very heavy, and so I rarely wear it because it. she had designed it in a type of yarn that was a chainette, and I did it in a yarn that was from Quince & Co. Same weight, but not the same drape. And so that's my fault, not the designer's fault, but I love the sweater and I do wear it occasionally. So it is keeping, um, another one that I made and this one seriously needs a gleaner to go with it. This is the Eyelet Yoke, Easy Eyelet Yoke by Knititude again. And this one is done in the yarn that it is called for and I love it. I absolutely love this yarn and I love this sweater, but I also have one that I made as the test knitter to this pattern and I made it out of um, uh, Stonehenge Fiber Mills um, Shepherd's Wool and I adore that one. It's just, it's chocolate brown and it just fits me and so it was a win for my changeover and the way that it drapes and the way that it does. So my change on this is I did a high-low, a low in the back, high in the front, and, and uh, I did um, 
a balloon sleeve on this one, and I love the way it came out. Um, another one that I did two pattern, but with a yarn that was not called for, and this is a washable yarn. Um, I did this out of, I think this was done, oh, I'd have to look. I know it's acrylic, but I don't remember which yarn it is, but it's the owl sweater. And it's nice and thick and warm, and I wear a silky camisole or long sleeve underneath it, and it's just beautiful. And as much as people put down acrylic and knitting with it because it's squeaky or something like that, I think they're using the wrong needles if they are squeaking, but... Um, It's washable, it's dryable, it's, I don't have to think about it. I glean it afterwards and get all the buzzy things off. Um, here's one, and this is just because we just cleaned out the bedroom and I'm getting ready to set up a new um, sweater cabinet. So that's why they're out here in the living room. But this is the love note. And this was done out of yarn that is cashmere and silk. And this was from my friend Margot KP when she passed away. Um, and this is just beautiful. I love it. And the drape on this is gorgeous. I do need to glean it. You can tell. Um, I haven't taken my sweaters in this year and gleaned them all. But it's just getting to sweater season here. So it's time for me to do all that. I washed everything before I put it away last year. But this is perfect over a long sleeve silky um, thermal. And I did a high-low on it, and I did not do the cast-on that they wanted. They wanted to, um, you cast on and then later came back and picked up, and because I'd done the ranunculus, I liked the way the neck on the ranunculus worked, so I worked the ranunculus part, plus it had the short rows in the back and everything, and I preferred that. And I did that at the top and then went into the number of stitches for this pattern. And I have worn this to death. I love it. And it's not a color I normally gravitate to, but it does look good on me. I wear it with a gold sweater, a gold silky underneath it. And so, I mean, I was deciding whether I want to keep or not. And I mean, I bought this. This is a sweater dress that I bought and it's acrylic. And I'm like, well, if I will buy an acrylic sweater, why won't I knit one? So I'm not a yarn snob. I use it all. And this one is one, it's called the Ebony. And my friend Lori had done it. And I'm like, I want that sweater. So um, I picked up, and I think this was done in vintage from Barocco. So again, Barocco, but an acrylic blend. And this has a shawl collar, and it is a vest. And believe it or not, I want to make it again with sleeves. It's got a kangaroo pocket. Or actually, it's got two pockets. Um, it looks like a kangaroo in the front, but it's not, so it doesn't bulk out your tummy. And it doesn't really bulk out the sides, but yet it's big enough in the pocket to hold a phone. And I can wear um, a silky or a lace top underneath it with lace arms, and it comes out very well. But this washes beautifully. And it dries beautifully. And so it's easy care because I don't need to spend a ton of time caring. My regular sweaters, like the pink one that I showed you or um, the green one that are, you know, I don't wash those every time I wear them, just like I don't wash these every time I wear them. But it is care that you have to take on your sweaters. Um, but like I said, I have so many now. I'm really being picky about what I love to knit. I'm very selfish in my knitting because the people that I have given knitting to are not always appreciative in the way that I think they should be. You know, I just spent hours of my life making that. And maybe I'm selfish in thinking that. 
but um, baby blankets and things like that, absolutely. But those I make out of cotton or washable or things like that. Um, I know I'm going on a rampage here and I didn't mean to, but that's really what we've been doing is minimalizing. So I went through, I went through my closets and um, I had an Ormo that held everything and I'm actually giving that to Sarge and I'm moving to clear totes that are going to be put on a wire, wire rack so the totes are completely closed. So if I need a cardigan, I pull out the cardigan tote. I need a, excuse me, if I need a pullover, I pull out the pullover tote. And um, just make it easy. And that's what we're looking at. And let me get back on track here because you know, I go off on wild goose chases, that's how it is. Um, so for my notes, where'd I hide them? There they are. Um, I haven't touched uh, a couple of blankets that I have going, but like I said, probably next week or next episode, I will go through and, uh, decide finish and frog. And as you've seen, I've already got quite a few frogs here that I'm going to be pulling out. Um, Podcast listening, uh, Anna Knitter, I've already mentioned. If you haven't checked out Cheverell's stuff, and Chevis is wonderful. Uh, she's out of Indiana, I believe. And I think we met once at Michigan Fiber Fest, but I'm not positive. But she's just, she's got a different personality and it just, it works. And then I'm, I'm watching uh, The Nitty Stew. And that's a stewardess that knits and travels all across Canada. And it's kind of cool. Um, for my listening, I have gotten into the Holderness um, family. And they're, um, of course, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts because, like I said, I have a commute. So um, the Holderness one is the one. And I got their t-shirt that says currently adulting. It makes me giggle. So I'm happy with that. Um... We did some fun things around here for Christmas. Um, we went on the 1880s train, um, went up to Santa Claus Village. It was the spiked, so we found out that we really like um, hot cocoa with butterscotch schnapps. Mm -hmm. And uh, mix that together. And then uh, I also picked up the Harry Potter um, advent for me. Um, I'm a Potterhead. So... Uh, I have that now at work and everybody's like, who are these little people? And I have to tell them and they're like, oh, okay, I've never read the book or I have read the book or I've seen the movie and we have a discussion. It just starts something just in a little shelf on my office. Um, games. Uh, we picked up the We the People game and can I pull that out here or is it right behind me? Yep. We did a couple different games for... Um, Christmas. We like playing new games. And Boo, let me see if I can get this out. It's right behind me. Boo sent me a couple that I needed to pick up, and so we haven't played those yet, but I'll show them. Um, we the People, and Sarge and I have played this several times. Um, this is a fight tyranny game. It is trivia and satire with a point. So one of the things is um, you have to you have to go down to zero. It's the opposite of, of Monopoly. It's the person with the least amount of money wins. So when you bankrupt yourself, you're done. And you have to bankrupt yourself twice because you have to bankrupt yourself in the outside ring and then you get moved to the inside ring, which is where you mortgage your house. So you truly bankrupt yourself. And it's interesting. It's a lot like uh, Monopoly in that you go around a board and it's kind of like Trivial Pursuit because you're answering questions. And it's kind of like, um, was it Payday? Or life. Life was that one. So you have on this card that you get, you have how many people you have in your family. And if you land on something, you're taxed per person or what kind of car you drive and you're taxed on that. But there's also a part of it that you have to insult each other while playing the game. And the person who doesn't insult um, gains money by not insulting um, on a certain square. 
and it says, warning, the contents of this box are riddled with information about our history of the Constitution and our religious heritage. And it does have one that is uh, We the People, which is all about uh, the Constitution or one, of the hist or one of the trivia questions. And then Freedom of Religion is another one. And then there's quotable quotes or spoken quotes or something like that. And then there's actual people and dates and times. And it is really interesting. And we have played this over and over and over. I think both times that we ended up pulling it out, we played it three times before we put it away. And that's only with Sarge and I. And you're not supposed to play it with only two. There's supposed to be three or more, but we don't have any friends here. So we are like we are. He's my best friend. So I play games with him. So this is the third edition. And this came from wethepeople.com. And I highly recommend it. Um, so there's five different. There's Portrait in Time, In God We Trust, We the People, Stubborn Facts, and Spoken Identity. Portraits in Time is significant figures in American and world history. In God We Trust is America's religious heritage, principles of faith, and scriptures. We the People documents that have shaped the American history, so not only the Constitution, but the um, uh, Articles of Confederation, the um, Oh, what was the one? Uh, there's the Declaration of Independence. There's the Anti-Federalist Papers. It just goes into all of this history. But it also goes over to the one in Europe and everything, the Magna Carta and things like that. Um, stubborn facts, which are interesting and historical facts in their context. So it gives you the context of things. And spoken identity statements made by politically relevant people. So... Um, one of these, one of the questions is the Fourth Amendment ensures the right of the people to be secure in their person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizure. Which practice by British soldiers caused this to be added to the Bill of Rights? And it asks writs of assistance, criminal prosecutions without trial, the quartering of British soldiers, or excessive bail. And then you have a time period to answer that. And it was writs of assistance. So it doesn't just give you the answer. It says the colonial practices of smuggling goods to avoid unjust taxes prompted Parliament to pass laws giving soldiers and officials nearly unlimited power to search private buildings, including homes, for smuggled goods. Soldiers use warrants they wrote themselves called writs of assistance. The Fourth Amendment was included in direct response to the abuses committed by British soldiers. And then it tells you that there's a picture of the Bill of Rights on the front of it. But um, then you have little sections like the cards. Instead of having um, the two card sets that are on Monopoly, you have Disappoint Big Brother and you have Social Justice working for you by mopping up your future. And so social justice could be government bails out struggling video cassette rental industry. Only $2 billion are needed to invest in this bedrock of American ingenuity and save tens of dozens of American jobs. Your entertainment costs increase to compete with the government idiocy. Pay $100 for every VHS tape you own in real life and you can guesstimate it. So like we right now, I have mostly DVDs and I didn't count those, but I have six videotapes that are still up there. I've moved them to DVDs, but I still have the actual tape. So I had to do 100 times six and I paid that down. And so I lost money, which the goal of the game is to lose all your money, but so good. So good. Um, get this game. The other games that we have looked at this um for christmas we got the train game we heard about it we got the one from new york we heard that it was based originally on sydney i think in australia and there's also a british one and there's the rules we don't get it they just don't get it we think we need to youtube this because we don't get it then we got the other train game that we haven't used that boo sent me and i forget the name of that but and I'll let you know how that is when we play it. And that one, you actually build trains and stuff. And then she told me to get one 
because she knows us and she knows our satire is not so neighborly. And be petty and destructive as you build your perfect neighborhood. And it came with a block party expansion kit that allows you to set your neighbor's house on fire with fireworks and stuff like that. So we haven't played this yet. It's still in packaging. We don't know. It's supposed to be fun though. So yeah. I know I've given a lot. I know it's a little, I've got a little bit of editing. The phone rang in the middle of that and stuff like that. So I guess uh, until next time, check your checkbook. And I'm going to continue on YouTube as long as I can at this point in time. Let's see how things go. Thanks. Bye-bye.